Hello, class. I'm going to go over the uh, second part of 2.1 in your workbook, Organizing Data. And, and so uh, as far as our outcomes go from our course, um, let's see, we are looking at, um, yeah, recognizing, examining, interpreting the basic principles of describing and presenting data, okay. Um, Yeah, and maybe even some of number one, explaining the use of data collection and statistics as tools to teach reasonable conclusions, okay? Yes, and this this part, this is uh, probabilities, this is going to be uh, in chapter four, okay? Um, also chapter four, probability and statistics, okay. Um, Okay, so we're going to, I'm just looking at the other sets that we have here. Okay, but these are, these are our outcomes. I'll refer to these um, throughout the semester from our course, course outcomes. All right, so let's go to where we left off in our workbooks. So I'm going to look at page 26, page 26 in your workbook, okay? And let me see. All right, so it says here, example, the following data represent the record high temperatures for each of the 50 states. Construct a group frequency distribution for the data using seven classes. Okay, so this is important. When you do your homework on online Connect Math, you wanna pay attention to the number of classes. So this is something that's, that's given to you. So you wanna note This will be told to you. Yeah, so they'll tell you how many classes they want you to create. In this case, they want you to create seven classes, okay? And then here's all your data. So you always wanna keep track of your um, smallest data and your largest data. And you see that we've helped you in this problem. We're identifying the lowest data as 100 and the highest value is 134. Yeah, so you would want to do that in your set of data that's given. So, I mean, I, there's probably several hundreds, but I right off the bat do see a hundred there. And let's see where I see the 134. Right there. And sometimes they, there might be two of them also, okay. Um, but there's the smallest and largest data and they're confirming that here. And then they have uh, the range is the highest value minus the lowest value. So that's why they're doing 134 minus 100 is 34, that's the range. And then they're noting that the number of classes that they told us was seven. So that's gonna be important. And then the width, remember the width, we had several formulas. The width, if it's, if the group, if the group frequency distribution is already given, um, then you can just um, vertically subtract using the lower class limits and the upper class limits. And let me see if I can find that original page. So like, for example, you know, when we were back on page 20, this is a group frequency distribution that was already created. And so here you could, you could find the width by subtracting like 36 minus 27 or using, subtracting using the lower class limits or the upper class limits. So you could have done 89 minus 80, and that would have given you nine, right? And we did find, we did verify the class width to be nine here, okay? So when these are already created, you can just vertically subtract using lower class limits or upper class limits. But, but we don't have one that's created. We're supposed to create this one from scratch. So we're trying to create this one from scratch, then you can't do that, that class width subtraction. So instead you have to know this other formula where you take the range and you divide it by the number of classes. So the number of classes is seven and the range, remember they told you you subtract the high minus low, which is 34. So if I get my calculator and find out exactly what that is, 
34 divided by 7, it's just, this is a TI30XX, uh, XX, is, um, let me write that down, it is equal to 4.8571428578. And, and remember that we saw uh, on page 20, we had instructions that um, for decimals, you want to round up because you want to make sure the class limits must be exhaustive, that there must be enough class limits to accommodate all of the data. Remember that? And so, and so we want to round up. And does it say that? Yes, it says here you want to round up. Okay. And so, um, so when you round up, um, round up means you want to Round up means you want to round to the next counting number. So this decimal 4.8571428578, it's between the counting numbers 4 and 5. So when you round up, we're rounding up to the next counting number, which is 5. And that's why they say to go with 5. Okay, and so that means when you create your class limits, you're going to have five of them. Okay, so when we did the problem page 20, this one had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one had eight of them. And, and um, let's see. Yes, this one had eight. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. This one had eight of of them. Let's see. Well, actually, I take that back. Actually, um, I take that back. So, so, okay, I take that back. So, we're rounding up to five, and that's going. That's our class width. That's our class width. Okay. Um, in this problem, our class width. In this problem, when we did it on page 20, our class width was nine, so nine. So, so if I'm confirming that, I, I could subtract like 89 minus 80 is nine, or 36 minus 27 is nine, okay? Um, and so uh, we're gonna keep that in mind for the width. The width will be five, okay? So just, just hang on to that. So. Um, now, as far as um, class limits, let's see, when we create our class limits, let's see. So just hang, hang on to that, that the width, uh, the class width, we just say the width is five. So just hang on to that thought, okay? The width is five, okay? Now, we, we need that. We need that to create this. We need that to create this. So um, the class limits, okay? So how do you kick it off? How do you start it off? So you start it off, you start off the class limits with the smallest data value, okay? So begin class limits with begin the class limits with the smallest data value, which in our case was 100, okay? So there's there's 100, okay? And then what we're gonna have to do to create uh, the lower class limits, so these are the lower class limits, what we're gonna have to do is add a class with the five, okay? So uh, to create the uh, lower, class limits, we add the class width of five, okay? So for example, right here where you have 100, I'm gonna do 100 plus five, which is 105, okay? And then to get, to get the next lower class limit, I'm going to say 105 plus 5, the class width, which is 110. 
And then we did, we filled in the blank here in the workbook. We did a couple of these here. We fill those in. And again, the way they got that is they did 110 plus five, which is 115. And then they did 115 plus five, which is 120. And then you do 120 plus five, which is 125, which they left vacant on purpose for us to fill in. And then 125 plus five is 130, okay? Now, as far as, um, okay, as far as when I was counting, how do you know when to stop? How many classes, to, how many classes do you need? That was, that was, that's related to this. You need seven classes. So this is class one, this is class two, this is class three, this is class four, this is class five, this is class six, this is class seven. So we need, we need seven classes. We need seven classes. Okay, and that's from that comment up there at the top. Let me see if I can increase that. Okay, so write that down. Now, in the, the previous problem when we were doing um, page 20, somewhere I had to tell you how many classes because I was counting. Remember, I was counting. So over here, I was counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Somewhere we had to have been told that there were eight classes. So here I have number of classes, number of classes. See, I have eight here. And somewhere I said that that has to be told to you. I don't remember. Um, I think I I I know I told you to write that down. I don't see it here, um, but somewhere I told you that this has to be told to you. The number of classes that this has to be told to you. So we would have to have been told that it was it was eight, and that's and I knew because I was working backwards. I already had this already, so I, I knew what to go back and go to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I already knew what to. I knew that's how I knew it was A because I already knew it was kind of working backwards, and and they would have told you that they wanted eight. Here they're telling us that they, they want you to create this from scratch, and they want seven seven classes so that's so you'll have an idea where to stop so the class width is five so you keep adding five you start off you kick it off with the smallest data value which is 100 and then you keep adding five to it and how many times do you keep doing that you do that so that you create seven classes one two three four five six seven okay now now to get to get this number here to get this value here we're going to use um, um, subtractions. So let me let me write this down. I have a note to put this down so that we create as many classes of class limits as told. Okay, so we are told seven. So that's how I need to stop there, okay? Okay, and then I guess for this page, and that's, that's all they kind of want us to discuss, I think, on this page, because I can tell, because when I look at the second page, let's go to the second page. When I look at the second page, the second page goes on as to how to how to accumulate this number here. So it says that the the first um, remember these are called lower these are called lower class limits lower class limits. Whereas this is going to be this is going to be the upper. This is going to be called the upper class limits. So lower class limits, upper class limits, okay? All right, did you write that down? Okay, so now it says that the first 
upper class limit. So we're talking about this one right here. This is gonna be the first upper class limit. So the first upper class limit is gonna be one less than the next uh, the next lower class limit. So this is gonna be one less than the next lower class limit. And these are the lower class limit. So in other words, you're saying that what they're saying is that this value is equal to, um, this is equal to the second lower class limit minus um, a form of one. But the form of one could be um, minus one if if it's a uh, if you're working with counting numbers and these are counting numbers but what if these had decim what if these had some decimals it could be minus point one or it could be minus point zero one or it could be minus point zero zero one I don't think it would ever go past that but it would have to be a form of one. It's just not always exactly the counting number one. Here, here this is, here for this problem, it's 105 minus one, because this is the counting number 105. So 105 minus one is 104. So that's what goes here. So the first upper class limit is one less than the next lower class limit. Okay, so this is, one less than this next lower class limit. The subsequent upper class limits are found by adding the width, okay? And our width, um, our width in our problem, remember from the previous page, our, remember our width, we found it to be five, remember? We did the range divided by seven, and it was this long decimal, and we rounded it up, the class width was five. So for us, the class width is five. So now, now to get these, you just add five. So, so this is 104 plus five, which is 109. And then this is 109 plus five, okay, which is 114. And then this is 114 plus five, which is 119. And this is 119 plus 5, okay, which is 124. This next one is 124 plus 5, which is 129. And this next one is 129 plus 5, which is 134. Okay, and then, and then you see that confirmed at the bottom, at the bottom of the page you see the class limits and that matches. You can see down here, down here at the bottom, you can see that that matches how we got that. So this is intended to show you that, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this page here to do like what what if, so I'm gonna, that way we can have it on the same page. So um, for practice, let's just say, let's just say, this is just an example let's just say that um, our class limit um, and let me push it let me push it more this way sorry let's see. so let's just say that um, our class limits. Okay, let's say that that our first class, let's say our first class one, let's say that it was 14.698. See, that's not a, that's not a counting number like this. And then you have this here. And then let's say this class two, let's say that we're 18.123, okay? And let's say that you had to find, you know, this next number here. 
in your class limit. So the idea of subtracting one, you would take this value, 18.123, and you would subtract a form of one. So it'd be 0 0.001. That's what you would do because this has three decimal places. And when I do, I'll just show you that, if I do um, 18.123, Point one two three minus point zero zero one. See how that gives me eighteen eighteen point one two two. Let me make that larger. And it gives me eighteen point one two two. Okay. And then, and then if I needed to uh, continue, like what this would be, I'd have to find my class width. So my class width, I'd have to subtract these up and down vertically. So I'd have to do 18.123 minus 14.698. So let's see what that is. 18. 0.123 minus 14.698 and that gives me 3.425 3.425 okay so so that would be my class width so then to get to get this next number here I could add that class width so then this this would be 18.122 plus 3.425, okay? So 18.122 plus 3.425 is 21.547. Twenty one point five four seven. Okay, so that's kind of like here how I was adding five because the class width here was five, remember? Um, and so, um, you know, if you if I were to check that CW for class width, if I were just to do like one. 15 minus 110, if I were to vertically subtract 115 minus 110, that gives me 5. So you see the class width was 5, we were to confirm that. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. I subtracted here to get the class width, and then I can add, add that to this um, lower class limit. So this is, or excuse me, the upper class limit here. This is a lower class limit, okay? So that's just, that's just one example of a uh, subtracting uh, one, a form of one. Okay, now let's say I had another example. Let's say I had, here's another example. So this is example, this was an example. Okay, to show, you know, like I'm subtracting one, 105 minus one. So this was 18.123 um, minus 0 0.001. Okay, let's try another one. Let's say we had class limits of Let's say I had this. Um, let's say the first class one. Let's say it was 13.24. So in the hundreds, say they're in the hundreds. And let's say class two was 17.36. Um, okay. And let's say you wanted to find this now. So to find this value, you would have to take 17.36 minus 0.01, okay? So it's a form of one. You're using a form of one and it, and it, has, it has the same, um, it, it, what I can say up here, let's see, one, this part here, one less than the next lower class limit 
I'm going to say the description here is that it has to uh, in ends in a one and it has to have has the same amount of place values as the class limits. So it has to end in a one. It has to have the same amount of place values as the class limits. Okay. So go ahead and write that down. Okay. So then, so then we have here um, 17.36 minus 0 0.01. So it's a form of one that has the same amount of place values. So then on my calculator, when I show that, 17.36 minus 0 0.01 is 17.35. Okay. And then if I if I wanted to find this value here, I need to explore the class width. So then the CW stands for class width. I would have to up here vertically subtract 17.36 minus 13.24. And let's see what that is. So 17.36 minus 13.24 is 4.12. So that's the class width. Okay. So then uh, I would have to define this. I would add the class width. So this would equal 17.35 plus that 4.12. So 17.35 plus that class width of 4.12 gives me 21.47. Okay, so ho hopefully that that makes sense then to you. And uh, and that's because, you know, when we when we do take our tests, or it's actually a quiz, it's this is quiz, quiz two is also a quiz. We have three quizzes and three tests. So we have quiz one, quiz two, and then test one starts with chapter three. But when we take our quiz, um, and you know, you were going to have, you could have different, um, different um, place values. Your class limits may not always be counting numbers. Your place, your, you could get a, pr a problem randomly generated that your class limits might have some decimals. Either this one has thousands. This one has hundreds, okay, or this is counting numbers. So you have to be aware of that, of all those scenarios. And on your homework, you probably will have a variety probably on your homework too, okay? All right. Okay, so then at the bottom, so this activity here was for helping you create the first lower class, the helping you create the first um, upper class limit and helping you to create um, the subsequent ones where you add the class width, okay? Okay, now the bottom part here, this it looks like it's talking about the class boundaries. The class boundary is midway between an upper class limit and a subsequent lower class limit. Okay, so um, so what we what we do is what the technique that I was showing was that your class boundaries, you either uh, we know that your class boundaries, They have to in in a five, and you're depending on what you use. You might use zero point five or zero point five. You might subtract and add point five. You might subtract and add point zero five, or you might subtract and add point zero zero five. Okay, so those are usually the values that we use. And and here these have to be 
these have to be a decimal place beyond. These have to be um, a decimal place beyond how our data is given. And our data, remember, was on the previous page 26. See all this data? They were county numbers. But because these were county numbers, remember what they have in common is when you create your class limits, the class limits are also going to be county numbers. And you see they were. So that means over here, like on these scenarios, we didn't actually you, I just gave this, like, where did that 13.24 gate come from? So I just gave you that as an example. But um, the data, what would the data have looked like? They would have had to have had decimals to the hundreds place value. This one, your data would have had to have had, look like this. Your data would have had to have been decimal places to the thousands place, okay? All right, so here in our class boundary, uh, here, this is, these are county numbers, so one decimal place beyond county numbers is the tenths place. So here, for this problem of these choices, we're going to use, we're going to use the minus and the plus 0.5. You cannot use this one, and you cannot use this one. You've got to use the minus and plus 0.5. So we're looking at 100 minus 0.5, and then we're looking at 104 plus 0.5. So, um, so from quiz one, we are doing class boundaries on quiz one. So you're going to subtract and add, and they're going to just give you one number. You're going to subtract and add to that one number, some form of five. Here, you're going to subtract and add, but you subtract from the first number, the lower class limit, and then you add to the upper class limit. So that 100, 100 minus 0.5 is 99.5. And then 104 plus 5 is 104.5. So that would be, that would be the first class boundary. And again, in 2.2, the reason why it's important to know class boundaries is um, when you create, for example, histograms, histograms, they use on the x-axis class boundaries, okay? And also, so do the ogives. The ogives also create uh, x-axis <clears throat> that have class boundaries. Okay, so now if I do another one, 105, I would do 105 minus 0. 0.5. 105 minus 0. 0.5 is 104.5. And then 109 plus 0. 0.5 is 109.5. Okay. And then 110 minus 0.5 and then 114 plus 0.5. So you're looking at 109.5 to 114.5. Okay. Okay, and then um, I won't do all of them, but, but you can see why on the next page, when you look at page 28 on the next page, you can see how they've done all of them on the next page. So if you wanted to practice these on your own and then check, see, you'd be able to check, see. See how those match? So if you wanted to practice these on your own, you could do that and then check these here. Okay, but those are class boundaries. So that's what this page was intended for to show that. Okay, so now let's go to the next page.
And now it looks like this is for uh, tallying data. See, it says tally. So um, I'll do a few of these. So the idea of tallying when you have is, is you don't want to go straight to a frequency. You want to complete your tallies first. And then after you're done with your tallies, then you go back and count the tallies and it gives you your frequency. And remember when you create a tally, um, remember when you create a tally where the fifth one goes, when you create a tally, it's one, two, three, four, and then the fifth one kind of goes diagonal, remember? So to create a tally, let me say of five, one, two, three, four, and then if you have a, if you have a fifth one, it goes this way. Okay, so here in your data, you start with 112. So you've you've already got this created already. Okay, and then to get this first upper class limit, we had to subtract a form of one that had the same same place value. But then 